वेलकम टू अक्षरशाल गोइंग टू इंट्रड्यूस यूनी जंक्षन ट्रांसिस्टर अंड इट्स कंस्ट्रक्ष अंड आपरेशन यूजी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स अंड यूजी ऐस ए स्वीप सर्क्यूट यूजी स्टैंड फर् यूनी जंक्षन ट्रांसिस्टर यूजी इज यूज ऐस ए स्विचिंग डिवैस UJT doesn't belong directly to the thyristor family but it is used to fire silicon controlled rectifier it is a three terminal device emitter base b1 and base b2 as the name implies a UJT has only one pn junction uni means one so it has only one pn junction whereas bjt has bipolar junction transistor the name itself says that bipolar junction and it has two pn junctions it differs from normal pn junction normal pn junction diode is having only two terminals whereas uni junction transistor is having three terminals so it differs from normal pn junction diode it differs from transistor also transistor has the ability to amplify the weak signal whereas uni junction transistor can't amplify a weak signal ujt consists of a n type semiconductor bar with leads b1 base b1 and base b2 it has a heavily doped p type emitter this is a p type emitter heavily doped p type emitter allied to a lightly doped n type semiconductor bar which forms pn junction as shown in this figure as, as shown in this figure there are two bases base b1 and base b2 base b2 is very close to emitter compared to base b1 the pn junction formed between p type emitter and n type silicon bar as shown in this figure this is the construction of ujt this is the symbol symbol of ujt here arrow mark is towards the base b1 originally this device was named as double base diode but now it is commercially known as ujt double base diode as it has two bases it is named as double base diode this is the equivalent circuit of the ujt rb1 this rb1 is the resistance between base b1 base b1 and emitter whereas rb2 is the resistance between base b2 and emitter so here rb1 is a variable resistance its value dependent dep dependent upon the emitter current if emitter current increases rb1 decreases if emitter current is less rb1 increases that's why it is a variable resistance rb1 is variable resistance so the total resistance between b1 and b2 is called rbb or bb rbb which is equivalent to sum of rb1 and rb2 total spread resistance between so resistance uh, total uh, silicon bar spread resistance between b1 and b2 and it is represented by rbb and it is equivalent to rb1 plus rb2 rb2 is the resistance between base b2 and emitter and it is fixed this rb2 is fixed when current ie equivalent to 0 when no signal is applied at the emitter terminal then ie equivalent to 0 if ie equivalent to 0 due to applied voltage vbb the current i starts flowing in the circuit then we can redraw this circuit why because this terminal is uh, no signal is applied at the emitter terminal so diode gets re reverse bias it acts as a open circuit so this we can eliminate this uh, diode then this circuit can be redrawn like this then this is simply a voltage divider circuit then current i is given by total voltage vb by total resistance rb1 plus rb2 now find the drop across rb1 drop across rb1 is nothing but i into rb1 i is i is calculated already so it is value equivalent vb by rb1 plus rb2 multiplied by rb1 so this uh, we can rearrange this equation so rb1 by rb1 plus rb2 into vbb this uh, 
ratio rb1 by rb1 plus rb2 is called intrinsic stand off ratio so here it is the ratio of rb1 to rb1 plus rb2 is called rbb so it is the ratio of rbb rb1 to rb1 to rbb the total base plate resistance and uh, here rbb total base plate resistance is equal to rb1 plus rb2 so it is the ratio of rb1 to rbb and it is called intrinsic stand off ratio and it is denoted by eta its value lies around 0.5 to 0.8 so here eta is given by rb1 by rb1 plus rb2 when i emitter current equivalent to zero so then v1 v1 means drop across rb1 drop across rb1 is called v1 so v1 v1 or drop across rb1 is uh, equivalent to this is eta no this is eta eta vbb so v1 or drop across rb1 as so a vrb1 equivalent eta vbb so as long as input voltage or emitter voltage is less than this uh, drop across rb1 or v1 diode is off why because the drop across r1 acts as a cathode voltage of diode when cathode when anode voltage is less than cathode voltage diode d is off when input voltage or anode voltage or emitter voltage is greater than this drop across r1 then diode d is on and a lot when diode d is on diode d is on then what happens diode uh, d gets forward biased forward biased means it is a pain junction no so a large number of charge carriers from p side will be transferred to n side so so then uh, charge when large charge carrier centers into n side region then what happens when charge carrier increases the resistance between emitter and base b1 base b1 decreases so that it reduces the uh, resistance between emitter and base b1 so this uh, then the device conducts heavily and device is said to be in on state or device is said to be fired from the equivalent this is the equivalent circuit of vjt from this the diode so uh, when diode starts conducting when the anode voltage is greater than the cathode voltage here total cathode voltage is equivalent to cutting voltage of diode is v gamma v gamma and drop across rb1 is eta vbb so total reverse bias voltage is v gamma plus v1 v1 is equivalent to eta vbb so when the anode voltage is greater than v gamma plus v1 then only diode starts conducting where v gamma is cutting voltage of the diode and it is equivalent to 0.7 volts for silicon diode this value of emitter voltage when emitter voltage or anode voltage is greater than v gamma plus v1 then only diode starts conducting so this value of emitter voltage or anode voltage which makes the diode to conduct is called as peak voltage and it is denoted by vp so and here see when as long as input voltage is less than or equivalent to v gamma plus v1 diode gets reverse biased so only there will be there will be uh, minority current only there will be minority current only there will be a minority current negative current which is less than ip when uh, anode voltage or emitter voltage when emitter voltage is equivalent to equivalent to eta vbb drop across rb1 so emitter voltage is equivalent to drop across rb1 eta vbb so both anode voltage is equivalent to cathode voltage then neither reverse current neither forward current flows in the circuit that's why then the current is equivalent to zero when both the both the sides are sides of voltage are equal then no current flows in the circuit so then current equivalent to zero when further then further if we increase this emitter voltage what happens it exceeds the total reverse bias voltage v gamma plus v1 then diode starts conducting when diode starts conducting when it exceeds when it exceeds and reaches a point called peak point where peak point is peak point is called peak point voltage is, is, is equal to v gamma plus v1 then diode starts conducting when conducting there will be some current current flows from anode to anode to 
cathode region this is equal to peak current it is represented by ip and this is the peak current correspond to peak voltage peak voltage is equal to v gamma plus v1 so vp equal to v gamma plus v1 equal to eta vvb so so whenever emitter voltage is less than vp ujt is off whenever emitter voltage is greater than vp ujt is on this is very important point so these are the input characteristics of ujt so let us uh, explain this uh, characteristics of ujt when the emitter supply voltage is zero when the emitter supply voltage is zero then what happens diode gets diode gets reverse biased so diode gets reverse biased so no current flows in the circuit only reverse bias means only there will be a minority current i.e. not when v gamma if v gamma is the cutting voltage of the diode if v gamma is the cutting voltage of the diode then the total reverse bias voltage is v gamma plus drop across rb1 say drop across rb1 is eta vbb so total reverse bias voltage is v gamma plus v1 or v1 equal to v gamma plus eta vbb so this is the total reverse bias voltage when the emitter voltage when the emitter voltage or anode voltage exceeds this uh, total reverse bias voltage then only diode starts conducting so now when emitter voltage when emitter supply voltage v is slowly increased slowly increased beyond zero when when it when it equals equals to v1 when it equals to v1 means drop across rb1 so that is equal to eta vbb then what happens I not I not decreases and becomes zero. I not will be reduced to zero. So here I not initially it is negative and it becomes zero. Why? Because with equal voltage levels on each side of the diode, anode voltage is equal to cathode voltage. So neither reverse or nor forward current will flow through the diode. As shown in in this as shown in this figure. Now let us see UJT applications. It is used for triggering devices such as silicon controlled rectifier, diac and triac. Diac means it is it is a diode for alternative current. So diac is a diode that conducts electrical current only after its breakover voltage. This is used as activating device for the triac. Whereas triac stands for triode for alternative current. So triode our triac is a three terminal bidirectional semiconductor switching device which can control ac in a load these are widely used in power control and switching applications so it is also used as sawtooth wave generator it is used as a relaxation oscillator it is used as a limiting circuit it is used for phase control it is used in voltage and current regulated supplies the main application of ujt is in switching circuits wherein rapid uh, discharge of capacitor rapid discharge of capacitor it doesn't take much time to discharge is very essential so ujt sweep circuit is called relaxation oscillator so any oscillator which generates non sinusoidal signal is called relaxation oscillator so here ujt is used to generate sawtooth waveform hence ujt is also called as relaxation oscillator now let us see how ujt can be used as sweep circuit the sweep ujt sweep circuit consists of ujt a capacitor and a resistor so these three components are arranged as shown in this figure here ujt serves the purpose of the switch in fact any current controlled negative resistance device may be used to discharge the sweep capacitor we know that when emitter voltage when emitter voltage is less than peak voltage ujt is off when emitter current is greater than vp then ujt will be in on so under quiescent conditions when supply is switched on when supply is switched on when supply is switched on vpp is switched on ujt is generally in off state so then when it is off state so why because uh, here emitter voltage is less than the peak voltage here emitter voltage is nothing but voltage across capacitor so its initial voltage is less than the peak voltage then so generally ujt will be in off state when it is uh, connected to supply then current uh, then uh, so it is off state no so it offers very high impedance then uh, then current flows in this direction only when current flows through capacitor then capacitor starts charging 
with a time constant rc then capacitor starts charging with a time constant rc when it rises to a value vp the ujt starts conducting when the ujt is on the capacitor starts then capacitor starts discharging through on on transistor then capacitor capacitor voltage falls to a value then capacitor voltage when capacitor starts discharging with uh, rapidly when capacitor voltage falls to a value point vb which makes the ujt off again capacitor starts again uh, when it is off then current flows through capacitor then capacitor again starts charging towards vp this charging and discharging cycle of capacitor c repeats and a sawtooth waveform of voltage across the capacitor is resulted for any queries please contact aksharshala@gmail.com thank you for further updates please subscribe to aksharshala